a reading from Animalia by Jean-Baptiste de Lamont, published by Fitzcarraldo. One October morning, alone in the sty, tending to the sow about to farrow, the genetrix is felled by a pain, and without even a cry falls to her knees on the freshly scattered straw, whose pale perfumed dust is still rising in whorls. Her breaking waters drench her undergarments and her thighs. The sow, also in the throes of labour, trots in circles, making high whining sounds, her huge belly jiggling, her teats already swollen with milk, her vulva dilated. And it is here, on her knees and later on her side, that the genetrix gives birth, like a bitch, like a sow, panting, red-faced, her forehead bathed with sweat. Slipping a hand between her thighs, she feels the viscid mass tearing her apart. She buries her fingers in the fontanelle, rips out the stillborn fetus and flings it far from her. She grips the bluish umbilical cord attached to it, and from her belly pulls the placenta which falls to the ground with a spongy sound. She stares at the tiny body covered in vernix quesosa. It looks like a yellowish worm, like the grey and golden larva of a potato beetle, ripped from the rich soil and the roots on which it feeds. Daylight filters between loose boards streaking the sour, dusty air, the bleak half-light that stinks of a knacker's yard and falls on the lifeless form lying on the straw. The genetrix gets to her feet, split in two, one hand under her skirt touching the swollen lips of her sex. She steps back, horrified, and leaves the sty, careful to latch the door, leaving to the sow the afterbirth and its fruit. For a long time she leans against the wall of the sty, motionless, gasping for breath, bright blurred shapes floating in her field of vision. Then she leaves the farm and takes the road towards puy limping through the heavy drizzle that washes her face and the skirt stained brown with lochia. Without a glance at anyone, she crosses the village square. Those who see her notice the soiled skirt she is gripping in one fist, the pallid face, the lips pressed so tightly that the mouth is white as an old scar. Her brown hair has escaped her scarf and is plastered to her face and neck. She pushes open the church door and falls to her knees in front of the crucifix. She walks back to the farm through the lashing rain, following the ditches, under the stoic gaze of cattle that stand unmoving in the downpour, her clenched fists pulling her cardigan over her flat chest. Head sunk between her shoulders, she drags her muddy clogs along the road, droning an Ave Maria to the rhythm of her breath and the sucking of the wooden soles in the soft ground. As she crosses the farmyard, she sees the figures of two men standing at the gate of the sty. She stops, checked by a primitive fear. Her heart, having faltered, is now pounding in her throat. The driving rain streaks a sky of slate. The air seems filled with a million needles. The figures seem to dissolve, to merge with the brown expanse of the sty wall, and so at first she cannot tell whether the men are turned towards her or away. Finally, she makes out the gesticulating hands, the clouds of vaporous breath, the fitful snatches of raised voices. She risks a step, a movement of the leg, but it is involuntary or ordered by some unconscious impulse. Then she races into the farmhouse where she quickly undresses, throws her underclothes and skirt onto the fire where they hiss like a nest of vipers before bursting into flame under the indifferent eyes of the two cows. She sluices herself with dishwater, wipes herself with a rag, she slips between her legs and then puts on clean dry clothes. She sits on the bench at the table. She stares out the window at the torrential rain outside, splashing on the muddy farmyard. She sees the figures of the men appear in the frame, recognises the hobbling gait of Albert Brizard, a local man with a club foot who works as a day labourer. She does not move as they approach. In her lap, her white knuckles grip a rosary, and she intones in Latin, Thou who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou who takest away the sins of the world, hear my prayer. Thou who art seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us.